I wanted to thank you guys for coming today. We wanted to talk a little bit about influenza and increasing our vaccination rates, why influenza is so important in this particular population of community, um, as well as tools and resources that are available to you guys from the network and um, how to document your influenza data into EQRS. So I'm going to go over again. I am the contract manager for e IPRO ESRD, um, networks one, two, six, and nine. And I am going to go over vaccination information. And then Stefana is going to talk to you guys about documentation and EQRS. Can we get the next slide, please. So as we know, the best way to protect yourself and your patients against influenza is to get a flu vaccine every year, every season. And according to a study that the CDC did, more than 200,000 people in the United States on average are hospitalized each year for illnesses associated with seasonal influenza virus infections. Vaccination rates in the ESRD population were less than 50% for each season. Influenza vaccination rates were lower in non-whites, women, younger patients, and peritoneal dialysis patients. Influenza vaccines were associated with a lower risk for these hospitalizations as well as the death rate. Next slide, please. Why is the influenza vaccine so important this year? People with chronic kidney disease, um, CKD, are at high risk for developing serious flu complication, which can result again in hospitalizations and even death. This is because CKD weakens immune response, which can, which can make the immune system less able to fight infections. And people with CKD at any stage, people who have kidney, have had a kidney transplant, excuse me, and people who are undergoing dialysis treatments are all at an increased risk for severe illness when it comes to flu. There was actually a article in regards to how flu was predicted to be this season and how it was highly promoted and communicated that vaccines were very important this year because of the, the strain that they were seeing in other demographical areas. And unfortunately, we still suffer within our our populations with our influenza rates. Excuse me, next slide, please. So just a little information about annual influenza vaccines. Um, a lot of the questions that patients, um, family members, staff have are, why do I need an influenza vaccine every year? The influenza virus changes every year. So for flu, you need to take a vaccine for that particular strand. Um, and again, as I previously discussed this past season, this particular strand was supposed to be very, very harmful to our ESRD population. Um, and just ways, how do you talk to reluctant patients about the flu shot? Um, ways to do that is kind of like responding, um, being clear with the information centered around what patients may believe or whatever their questions may be. Um, a lot of it comes from misinformation, miscommunication, things that they've seen on various outlets, including social media or talking to family members. But unfortunately, those particular individuals don't fall under this circumstance. And with ESRD, it's very important to get our patients as many vaccines as are available to them. Um, you can watch for nonverbal reactions. Um, Addressing further questions when it comes to confusions, um, ask what are their thoughts about the influenza shot or the vaccine so that you can understand where they're coming from. Again, if they receive misinformation, if the information they have is not up to date, or if it just doesn't make sense, you have the opportunity to clear that up with them. Um, and um, if at that particular point, you can convince patients to getting vaccinated. Having the vaccine available is always useful. I know that sometimes vaccines aren't available within the facilities, but we from a network perspective are big on um, educating facilities on where patients can go to receive their vaccine. Um, they can get it from their doctor's office, different pharmacies, things of that nature. Um, and so we don't want them to assume that they only have this particular moment at this time to get these vaccines, but more so coming from a standpoint of communicating about why vaccines are so important. 
Next slide, please. And as most of you guys are aware, IPRO has um, IPRO Learn, which is an educational forum where facilities can go to get different resources, interventions, things that the network has produced or released in the past it, as of today that helps facilities educate and use these tools with their um, additional tools that they have from a company standpoint. We, are, we understand that a lot of facilities have their own tools that are brought down from a corporate um, standpoint that they utilize, but we, we provide um, tools as well as resources to kind of help, again, educate, make, the communication easier for from staff to patients and something such as what you see here, the protect yourself, um, get the vaccines you need. This is vaccines recommended for dialysis patients. It has information on influenza vaccines, pneumonia vaccines, hepatitis, as well as COVID-19 and how the vaccines prevent diseases. It allows uh, patients to be educated. This resource allows for patients to take it with them, um, read it over, possibly communicate it with their family members, whoever's part of their care team to make sure that they have a clear understanding and that when the opportunity presents itself to be vaccinated, that you know they're up to date, they fully understand, and they're willing and open to be vaccinated. So please, if possible, go to our IPRL, our educational forum, utilize those resources that are in our increasing vaccination rate toolkit, as well as our COVID-19 toolkit to help educate these patients on why influenza vaccines are so important. Um, Next slide, please. And for healthcare personnel, it, it goes the same way. Um, we promote staff vaccines, we provide staff vaccines, um, and we have hesitancy. There's always going to be patient hesitancy and staff hesitancy. And with that, it comes again with education, building that uh, community of trust, making sure that they are aware of what is available to them, um, why it, it is particularly in important to healthcare personnel um, because of the fact that they are in this um, the, they are in these clinics, they are in this particular area and they come in contact with these patients who are immune compromised um, and that they spend long amount of time. And we know that we're wearing gloves, we're we're masking, things of that nature, but not in all cases does everybody practice those universal precautions. Um, and within the facility, yes, that's what the expectation is, but Think about when when staff step outside of the facility when they're at home. A lot of the a lot of the disease spread from the information we received from a network perspective came a lot with community spread and lack of infection control at home. So it's a big part, and, and it's really important for us um, to ensure that we're also taking the patient's care into consideration when we consider if we're going to be vaccinated or not. And when you do have staff that are willing to be vaccinated, frequently thank your employees for caring enough about their own health and the health of others to get the vaccine. And if possible, you might even consider creating a party like or celebratory theme or an atmosphere around a pro vaccination culture. Because um, we all know that many people get diseases from things that vaccines can prevent. And um, unfortunately, we just don't have <laughs> people who are willing to get these vaccines. Healthy People actually did a focus study on um, how preventing infections dis diseases and or promoting that in a sense helps vac increase in vaccination rates. Um, again, promote and take credit document, document, document. We've all heard that if it wasn't documented, it didn't happen. But while at the same time being understanding, put yourself in a patient's shoes and make every effort to be empathetic, recognizing the challenges that they may have experienced that they may have experienced when it comes to vaccines, but being available to deliver information and educate them on why it's so important for them to be vaccinated. Here are some um, links that are available for healthcare personnel um, flu vaccination reporting in NHSN, um, as well as the criteria to that and the reporting requirements. And I believe these slides will be available for you guys to get this link. Um, and I think, let's go to the next slide. Next slide, please. I think that may be all for me. Yes, that's all for me. 
here is my contact information. Again, I am the vaccination lead and the contract manager for QI for the IPRO ESRD networks 1, 2, 6, and 9. There's my email as well as my telephone number. And I, you can also do a fresh desk ticket if you have any questions. I know that you guys have received performance scorecards that have data that may not um, equate to what you guys have previously seen. So that's why we're going to get a little bit into the, do the documentation aspect of it with Stefana so that we're ensuring that everybody is fully aware of how and where to document these vaccines. So again, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I am here as an avenue of support for you when it comes to anything regarding vaccinations as well as other OKRs. I can also put you in contact with those respective leads as well. So again, thank you for being here and I'm gonna pass it over to Svetlana. Thank you, Aisha. Hi all, I'm Svetlana Wolkin and I will go over the EQRS vaccination reporting that will help you make corrections to the UPIs included in the flu vaccination report you received last week. I hope you all have a copy and you know what I'm referring to. Um, please have those reports accessible to you um, that way we can go through them together and you could log into EQRS and follow along with the training I'm going to provide. Um, right now I will go through some important EQRS screenshots and then I will open it up to some questions afterwards. And I'm happy to go back to any slides you might want to look at again. Um, but if you do have any questions, please do not include any PHI or PII in the chat and we'll go over the questions at the end of the next few slides. Next slide, please. So here's a little bit of background to kind of add to what Aisha was saying. Um, CMS requires for patient flu, hepatitis B, and pneumococcal vaccinations to be reported in EQRS for all patients. The vaccinations used to be within the clinical section of EQRS, but in November 2022, they have been moved into their own vaccination section that is accessible from each patient's UPI. So when you look up a patient's UPI, you will see these options under manage patients and vaccin vaccinations is one of those sections right now. And we all know that the data can be either submitted via batch or manually one patient at a time Neither method is perfect. We know that they all have kind of challenges and flaws, and that is why we send out these reports so that you can see the data and have an opportunity to make it more accurate if needed. Next slide, please. So with regards to the reports that you received last week, let me explain where this data comes from. So the vaccinations are entered into EQRS either manually or via batch, then CMS extracts the data and provides each network with that network's facility reports. Then the network analyzes the data and redistributes it to the facilities, including the UPIs that are impacted most. So here's a quick screenshot of the latest report. Um, the data has recently been reanalyzed by CMS, so your rates this past month will look much different from the rates you have been receiving in previous months. And this was a deep dive analysis that CMS conducted and completely reworked the data. So now they believe this is totally accurate and we sent it out to you guys the minute we got it. Okay. So remember that the flu season that we're talking about, and this is really important because it does cause a lot of confusion, is we're talking about August through February. So flu season does not last the full year, but we're just talking about August 2022 through February 2023. So this is the data that we're looking at, nothing from 2021, okay? Um, and like in the screenshot, the UPIs are of patients that are not listed as yes, vaccinated for flu. So this is anybody that's not listed as yes and is not excluded. And we'll go into it on the next slides. So next slide, please. Okay, hopefully you have that report in front of you and you could kind of see what I'm referring to. If you can actually log into EQRS and look up one of the UPIs 
that is on the report and head over to their vaccination section. Like on the screen, you will see the three vaccinations that are available in EQRS. You are welcome to go back and fill those out anytime. We strongly encourage you to do so. Um, influenza, time's running out for the season. That's why we're prioritizing it right now for you to go in there and get that data cleaned up. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So if you look up a patient, and this, this slide looks a little scary, but don't worry. Um, when you look up a patient, you could see information at the top, which shows doses received, and also information at the bottom that shows doses not received. So if we scoot to the top and look at the doses received, it will include the name of the vaccine that the patient received, or it will say unknown, and that's okay too. It will also show the vaccination date. There may be several rows listed here, but we only want to look at the date that's within this flu season, okay? So again, in this screenshot, we see October 2021. That's last season. That's not gonna help us this year. So we wanna look at the one that has the vaccination date of this flu season, which is August through February, okay? And you will also see in the last column a date that the vaccine was recorded. So this is interesting. This example at the top shows that in August 2022, the October vaccination was recorded. So a little bit late. And then at the bottom screenshot, in the doses not received, this section, if it's completed, might overwrite the stuff that you have in the top section. So imagine if you have the top information saying, yes, vaccine was received, and the bottom section saying, no, vaccine was not received, it's going to go with the worst case scenario. And that's why the patient might appear on your report as not having been vaccinated. So you can see it's got the same sections, almost the same sections, such as when was the vaccination offered but not received? And look at that. This one in the example shows this flu season. It's saying that in October, this vaccination was offered but declined. And this information was recorded this past January. So if a patient does get a vaccine, if this patient does get one, today, or you want to go in and say, no, they did get one in January, you have to make sure that you not only add that information to the top section, but that you also edit or remove it from the bottom section. That way, it won't conflict with each other. And let me take a quick pause to check comments to see if there's any, any confusion or concern. Let me see. Okay, uh, hesitant to give our patients if the medical provider says, okay, that's an Asia question. <laughs> so we, let me see if we can move on to the next slide. I'll keep this on here for just another second for you guys to look at it. But again, notice how the top section and the bottom section have a lot of information in them and they could be conflicting with each other. So if the patient you're receiving a report shows not received, go in and make sure that there's nothing in that record indicating that it was not received. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. So now if you wanted to fix the data, you would just click edit and then modify the information or you'd be able to delete it entirely if you want. So even if the vaccination was received at another facility or a pharmacy or a hospital, you can still include that information and it will count as yes, vaccinated. You can even use an approximate date if you're not totally sure. See how at the bottom there's got a vaccination date and then an approximate date? So that, that works too. But you have to remember that the only exclusion reasons that CMS will accept are medical and religious philosophical. If a patient declined without explanation or you put a reason of other, they will still be considered as eligible but not vaccinated. 
So please keep that in mind. You will continue to see them on the report if they've um, declined without explanation or other. But hopefully the tools that we have provided will help you get as many patients actually vaccinated and address any concerns that they may have with the vaccination. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So here are some of the important links that will help you clean up these reports. We've got the link to EQRS. We got the instructions that we created with some screenshots, just like you've seen above. And we've also got the CMS vaccination requirements where they, you could see some more legal jargon about what is needed and why. And also we have a ticket um, link for you to submit questions if you have any. Um, now I'd like to open it up if you guys want to discuss anything, if you want to post any questions in chat, leaving it up to you. How can we best help you? I'm not seeing any questions. Would anybody would anybody like to unmute or would you like to type something in? I do okay. see someone said that this was extremely helpful and they, how they forgot to go to the vaccine oh. screen. <laughs> oh, good. Which is not, no longer part of the clinical data. Got it, got it. Why can we cannot unmute? Sorry about that, Ashley. Um, forgot how to go to the vaccination screen that is not part of the clinical. Yeah, Stephanie, if you don't mind scooting up to slide nine, please. That's a good screenshot to, yep, perfect, thank you. Yep, you would log into the UPI, you would find the UPI, and then you would navigate to the vaccinations. And the question from Joy is why would it not batch over incorrectly? That's a good question, and we're all learning this. We learned a lot about this in the last month. Um, a lot of batch submitting systems were not fully compatible with this new modification, this move from the clinical section into the vaccination section, even changed what some of these eligible and ineligible reasons were. And the your batching system may not have adjusted exactly at the same time. So we are seeing that if somebody says that they are declining for medical reasons, more than likely it will transfer over correctly. But if somebody's declining for other reasons in your batch system, it may not flow correctly into EQRS. And that's why we want you guys to really double check and make sure that it did flow in correctly. Is there any way it can be directly added I don't know about the mass immunization system. Aisha, do you know anything about that? I've not heard of that as an EMR. I have not either, but um, I can look into it. Please, it's called mass immunization system, a state system. Hmm, interesting. We'll look into that. We have not heard of Anything outside of the dialysis batch providers um, being able to batch into EQRS. I think there's a lot of EMRs out there that are trying their best. Can we get the, like, um, is it an LOD, uh, uh, LDO, SDO independent? Can we get the facility to see if maybe this is one that we're just not aware of as of now? Maybe, yeah, yeah. The state system, um, I know some states are moving to uh, required EMRs, but I don't know the state of that being connected to EQRS at this time. Okay. Yeah. And then there is, why are there four reporting options when only two are considered correct? Yeah, and Stephanie, if you don't mind going to slide 13, please. Thank you, thank you so much. So 
these are the options that were built to kind of replace the prior options that were there. I don't know why there's a distinction between declined without and other. It's a lot of trying to get different systems to communicate the same language and it never totally goes right. So we have not gotten a definition from CMS about what other should mean, but we hope that at least the top three could be um, could be most applicable to the patient situation. And we hope that anyone that declines without explanation could be convinced to provide an explanation that could be addressed with some of the tools and resources. Definitely, because if, if a patient is not going to be able or doesn't have the opportunity to be vaccinated, we will want to remove them from uh, the denominator. Um, but without that option, they would just continue to show. And so it would continue to look as though this patient just hasn't been vaccinated, even though the opportunity has presented itself and they have just refused. So, so if possible, getting the explanation out of them as, as, as much as we can, or, you know, excluding them, or just, again, educating them and not so much convincing them that this is, you have to do this, but more so taking it from the approach of this is better, this is for you, this is better for you, this is part of a healthy life plan, and educating them on why being vaccinated again in this particular immune compromised population is the best way to prevent hospitalizations and death. Exactly. We don't want these allergic and religious philosophical to just be easy out. This really does have impact when patients are not vaccinated. It, it impacts everybody around them. When is the vaccination program? Flu season, I believe, ends in February, but you will be able to continue to report this data um, for a few more months. But it's better to just get it over with as quickly as possible so that you don't get any more reports with action items from us. And CMS does measure the network on um, how we're doing towards reaching 90% or 100% vaccination. And the, the further we are, the more activities CMS requires of us to put onto facilities to make these improvements. So that makes sense. Until we all reach 100%, we're going to have work to do. And we know that sometimes 100% is just not possible in some facilities, but the closer to go, the better. Um, we do, like, we have some facilities who are also close, and it's like, what can we do to get that push? Maybe the census is, is there's only four patients that need to be vaccinated, and they just, they're on the fence right now, they're hesitant, they don't, they don't know. Lobby days, huddle board, um, vaccination campaigns. I know that I've had facilities who pre-plan the way that they were going to execute their influenza campaign um, so that it gave patients opportunity to investigate, um, read on it, just have more information so that it, it allowed for them to make a better conscious decision versus we're giving vaccines today. Do you want to get vaccinated? And if there's some reason for not getting vaccinated that we haven't thought about, please let us know. We would love to do some research and help address that concern. Any other questions? I think this is really helpful to everybody that's listening, hearing some of these questions, um, stirring up some discussions. Please don't be shy. And if you guys are still having issues with unmuting, please put it in the chat. Um, we were here to answer any questions you guys may have. That's why we took this time out to make sure you guys were up to date on how to document appropriately, provided education on why influenza vaccines are so important. And if not, if, if, if they don't, I know we are approaching the end of the season. And so maybe we have missed that opportunity, but again, we can always educate and maybe we can convince 
a, a staff member or a patient to get vaccinated next season. But um, again, if we do have all those vaccines, we want to be able to take credit for all that work and all that energy and effort that we put into getting these patients vaccinated. So we want to make sure that we have all of our vaccinations documented appropriately so you guys can receive that credit and those performance scorecards don't look the way that they look with all of those UPIs that need to be rectified. For sure, for sure. And Stephanie, would you mind backing up one more slide? I'm happy to go over this. This is this is confusing. This takes me a couple of minutes to kind of get reoriented every time I look at a patient record. So when you look up a UPI, you might see these two sections filled out and you might even see many different records under each section. The top section is called doses received. So like in this example, this shows the dose from last year, but not the dose from this year. So this shows that the patient did receive a vaccination, but for the 2021-22 flu season, there's nothing there for the current flu season. But down below, in the doses not received section, it shows that this patient declined this year and there's no other info other than they declined in October, that's it. So maybe this patient needs to be updated to say, yes, they did get the vaccination. So you would need to modify this record from no to yes. And then you will see two records appear at the top, one for last year, and one for this year. So it does require actually looking at the UPIs and kind of slowing down and thinking, what am I seeing here? Is this the vaccination date? When was this recorded? Is this a vaccination declined? Is that actually true? So I hope this slide is helpful. It, it took a minute to find a good example like this for sure. Anything else? Was that clear? Was that anything else I could try to paraphrase? Can you update the information anytime? Well, you could update it. Um, great, anytime, but um, CMS will eventually take a snapshot of the data and that will be your final result for the year. And um, they're going to stop sending these reports very soon and it'll be what it is. So there's no real reason to kind of prolong this longer than it has to. We're hoping that maybe this month and then in the early weeks of next month, you guys can get this all cleaned up, especially with the change that happened in November and the batching not working as expected and the, the manual screen changing locations. We hope that you can just take some time to focus and get this cleaned up. We have the newest data that CMS recalculated. It's as accurate as it's gonna get right now. We sent it out the minute we received it. And I hope that you can just get it over with. We're here to help submit your questions. We will look up each UPI you want us to and tell you what we see that's wrong, if there's anything that needs to be fixed. So we'd love to help you kind of just get this off your plate until next year. Any other questions? All right, we will, we will share this recording with you guys. Um, we'll figure out the best method and the best plan for it. Um, Aisha, I don't have anything else. If there's no more questions, I'm happy to wrap it up if you are. Um, yeah, I don't see any more questions. Again, I hope this information was beneficial for you. I hope the information that you guys receive in your performance scorecards are also beneficial to you and your facilities. And if there's anything in particular that you would like to see, always reach out or you can do a ticket you can reach out to me you can you provide that verbiage or what it is that you guys are looking for so we can try to help you to the best of our ability and again thank you for joining and i hope you guys have the opportunity to clean everything up so again you get credit for the vaccines that you were able to receive thank you thank you so much for thank attending you guys.